In the meantime, I want to bring in the opposition, um, the manager of opposition business, Paul Fletcher. We've just seen the uh, calendar of the, the sitting for next year. What do you make of it? It looks like a March 25 budget. Does that mean we're heading to pretty much confirmed an election in early May? Is that your read? Well, I'm sure there'll be people speculating about that. I'll leave it to the commentators to speculate. We're, of course, going to spend every day between now and the election, whenever it's called, making the point to the Australian people that just about everybody feels worse off than they did uh, when at the last election in, um, in May 2022 because, you know, real uh, per capita after-tax household income or uh, after-tax income is now down uh, over 8%. Uh, inflation persistent and sticky. People feel worse off. And uh, th this next election will be a chance to... Um, Vote for a party that has a plan to fix that. On um, this report or complaint by the Chief of Staff to the Deputy Prime mm. Minister, what's your response to that? Well, everybody has a right to a safe workplace and employees who are, are complaining uh, of bullying or other matters uh, obviously need to have a place to go to uh, report that. Look, I'm not going to comment on the specifics of the case. Uh, it may be that... Uh, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's former Chief of Staff, you know, may ultimately down the track take legal action. For those reasons and others, I'm not going to comment on specifics. What I would say is it was our government, uh, the Morrison government, which commissioned the Jenkins Review, which has led to a whole series of changes. Of course, the legislation has been introduced to establish the Independent Parliamentary Standards Commission. There's already a Parliamentary Workplace Support Service. Uh, as to the specifics of the allegations that have been made by Richard Miles, former Chief of Staff, that's really a matter for uh, him to address. No doubt he'll be asked questions by the media and others about it. But um, Is it something you will take up in question time? Uh, look, um, there's always a wide range of matters for us to consider in question time and uh, there's, there's a lot of questions we want to ask on behalf of the Australian people about this government's economic mismanagement, about... Uh, this government being on both sides, trying to walk both sides of the street when it comes to Israel, walking away from uh, decades of bipartisanship uh, on re Israel, mismanagement of immigration, the circumstances in which people have come in from Gaza on tourist visas without ad adequate security checks. When it comes to Israel, though, you're saying they're walking both sides of the street. Uh, is that reference to the fact that they're saying you, Israel can defend itself, has a right to defend itself, but calling for a ceasefire well, at the same you know, time? The leader of the opposition wrote to the Prime Minister over the weekend proposing that there be a motion that we hope could be a bipartisan motion, expressing support for the people of Israel, recognising the one-year anniversary of the horrific Hamas terrorist attacks with 1,200 innocent people killed. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, insisted on inserting a provision uh, which called upon Israel essentially to, you know, cease its acts of self-defence and that was why we were unable to arrive at bipartisan language. Very disappointing. Uh, subsequently, we had the Senate pass a motion where Labor did agree to amendments uh, referencing Israel's right to defend itself. We've seen a weak, inconsistent position by the Prime Minister, uh, not based on moral clarity, but based on domestic political considerations. Paul Fletcher, thanks for your time. I appreciate Thank it. You.